It's crazy because I'm morphing into my mother and I don't want to be her because she's an old single woman and she loves to watch the news. And I don't know if you know people that watch a lot of news, but they feel like the world is a far worse place than it actually is. So every time I call my mother with something exciting, she likes to hit me back with fresh fear. <laughs> call my mother up recently. I say, hey, Ma, I'm going to Vegas. She was like, oh, be careful. You're going to get drugged. <laughs> I was like, Ma, I hang out with black people. That's not our shit. She was like, no, baby, they drugging everybody. I was like, oh. It's crazy because I went to Vegas and got drugged. I don't know if she had a premonition or what, but let me start from the beginning. So me and my homegirl went to the Encore Beach Club, and I saw all the cabanas in the back. I said, ooh, bitch, we need to be over there with the ballers. And she was like, no, you have to have a wristband. And I was like, these titties are the wristband. Let's go. Like, you know about them wristband titties? We made it past security, too. So the first cabana group of younger guys, I was like, hey, what's up? And they was like, nah, keep it moving. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I get rejected in a public place with music, I immediately start dancing. And I pass it to the next lonely bitch. Like, he wasn't talking to me, he was talking to you. I don't know if you've ever been to Vegas in the summertime, but it's 115 degrees. So I had sweat dripping down my face, the sun crippled my back. I'm over 30, so my knee went out. Every cabana like, nah, keep it moving. I was like, ooh, I understand. I made it to the last cabana. This guy was like, hey, you want to party with us? And I was like, hell yeah. Should have known things was weird because he tried to feed me a piece of fruit with his hand. And I slapped it. I was like, ugh, that's unsanitary. <laughs> because I feel like most men go to the restroom and you guys don't wash your hands. And I like dick and I like fruit, but I don't like dick fruit. <laughs> He was like, well, you want some water? And I said, of course. And behind my back, he put Molly in my water. I had never done drugs a day in my life, and he put Molly in my water. And when I tell you I had the best time of my life. <laughs> yes! For the first time in my life, I felt free. Now I know how it feels to be white. I felt free. I had no oppression or struggle on my shoulder. I was non-judgmental. That same guy came back with that dick fruit. I was like, ah! I was in the corner like, hey, I taste the dick and everything. Because once you had dick, you never forget how it tastes. Rich dick tastes like caviar. Broke dick tastes like street meat. You know the kind of Mexican people sell with the hot dog with the bacon wrapper. That's broke dick right there. Tastes good as hell in the moment, but in two days it's gonna mess up your stomach and your credit. <laughs> it's crazy because I want to do Molly again, but I don't know how to ask for it. Like, I know where to get crack from my cousin, but I don't know where to get Molly. And I talk loud, so I'll be in the club like, hey, who got some Molly? And they be like, shh. <laughs> But then I'm always weary of asking, because somebody could double back as the police, like, hey, bitch, I'm the police. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> so what I like to do is I like to go to clubs and sit my drink down. <laughs> hey, I'm going to the bathroom. <laughs> Nobody ever put shit in my drink. <laughs> Where is Cosby? <laughs> Good time to me. <laughs> Don't owe me, because as a black woman, I stood by his side. I was like, Bill Cosby would never do anything like this. This is a man trying to bring him down because he wants to buy NBC. Mm -hmm. Ten women in, I was strong with the black conspiracy. When it got up to 50, I was like, ooh, he did that shit. <laughs> <laughs> 